Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Lord's house as we gather for worship and praise today. Today's kind of a transition Sunday because yesterday was Epiphany. That was the day that the wise men went and, and saw Jesus following the star. And then also then today, uh, the scripture jumps 30 years later to the baptism of Jesus. So to start our service, we're going to hear the Epiphany reading. And then we're going to, the rest of the service all revolves around the baptism of Jesus. So we'll start with that epiphany reading from Matthew 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, the old wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes and the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. 
and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When, the, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. We'll begin our worship by rising and greeting one another with the handshake of God.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord reveals Jesus as his Son. The voice of the Lord reveals we are his children too. In holy baptism, each of us was baptized into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, we were united with Christ. Yet we have often lived as if we were entirely independent and autonomous. We have lived as if our identity were not in Jesus, but in our own selfish desires. Yet our Heavenly Father invites us to turn back to Him and ask for His forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we confess that we are by nature sinful and have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. On account of Jesus, forgive us, renew us, and unite us to your name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die and rise for you. In baptism, you were united to Christ in both his death and resurrection. You were buried with him, but also raised to walk in newness of life. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Our response of psalm this morning is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a cow, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First lesson from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Our epistle reading from Romans 6 is also the basis for our message today. What shall we say then? 
Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by, death, by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Please rise for our Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel from Mark chapter 1. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. These are the words of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We profess our faith by singing the creed.
How many you received gifts for Christmas? Everybody? There's no Scrooges around? Okay, good. Me too. We were blessed, especially when we had family around us too. That's a gift. You may have got clothes, you may have got shoes, you may have got toys. Some of us got some toys. Today I said we talked about holy baptism, baptism of font is at the front of the church. It is at the front of the front of the church. It's the first thing we see. We see that, and that's what saves us. God, the water, but with special words from God. Do you remember your baptism? Nobody? Me either. You might quite have been quite young, a week old, a month old, a year old, or maybe three years old. You don't know. I don't remember. There was something we were given that day that was going to be with us in our future. Baptism is a different kind of gift for us. It has two per parts as I talk. The water, as John talked about, and then the words. Does anybody know what those words were? Before I ask John. This is John. I baptize thee in the name of of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We receive that water and those special words so that we get to share in what Jesus did for us on the cross. That made us a part of this family of God. <coughs> Being a part of that family of God gives us some gifts, some privileges. It's a most important gift when we're being baptized. God tells us we are part of a family that includes people all over the world. Boys and girls, men and women, friends from many countries, people that we don't even know about. God promises love to all people. God promises it and never leaves us. He promises that once we are a part of that family, we remain in that family. And we'll have no sadness and no bad because of what we pray for or what your faith believes in. It will be the best and the happiest place to be imagined. So let's remember, holy baptism is a gift from God. The gift has two parts. Water in God's special words, <coughs> which are, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Again, what does it mean to be baptized? Well, it means to be a part of God's family. And being a part of God's family is the best gift of all.
We pray. Lord, send the Holy Spirit now to work in our hearts and minds, pointing us to the gifts and blessings that are ours in our baptism. Thanks to Jesus. Amen. As I have been working on Jenny and Devin's house, one thing that has become abundantly clear to me is that I'm much better at demolition and grunt work than I am at precision work like a cabinet maker. This has become abundantly clear as I've been doing the trim and all those fancy mitered corners that have to be just right. I've been trying my best, but it doesn't always work out exactly. And that's where I've gained a new best friend, color matching putty and sealant. <laughs> when my miters are, are not just right on for whatever the reason, that putty and sealant, it covers my errors and shortcomings. It covers the gaps and the, the ugly is made acceptable and sometimes even beautiful. The work at Jenny's is similar to what our Lord is doing to each one of you and me. Our Lord is filling the gaps. He's, he's repairing the ugly, making us acceptable and even beautiful. You see, no matter how hard we try, everyone has holes and gaps in them. Deep down in places that no one likes to talk about, we all have them. It could be gaps and holes like loneliness and insecurity and and fear and loss and the need and the needs are, are common among us all. When we look toward the future, there's gaps that can look scary. Widows and widowers have holes of grief over the loss of a spouse. There are women who feel the gap of being unappreciated, and men have holes of being afraid that they've maybe failed their children. How many of us carry a lifetime of holes and gaps of things like guilt and shame and regret? You know, even those who appear to have everything, they still have empty holes, even in them. There are those who feel a gap that's so wide that nothing can seem to fill it, they just want to die. You know, the truth is, is that everybody has holes and gaps to fill. And everyone is looking for some sort of putty or silicone to fill in those holes and gaps to hide them. You know, when I started uh, working at Jenny and Devon's, the, the store only had brown putty. Putting that on white boards, well, it made the gap filling ugly, sometimes made it unacceptable. Unfortunately, that's what happens in people's lives, too. They spend too much time trying to fill the holes and the gaps with the wrong stuff. We seek every kind of diversion to, uh, our fallen hearts and minds can devise in order to, to try and fill those spaces within us. We use things like entertainment and technology and achievements and money and sex and drugs and alcohol and even the praises of others. We do everything that we can to try and fill the spaces, to, to ease our loneliness, to answer our questions and to erase and ease our pain. But you know, none of it works well, does it? For a moment it might seem to be okay, like when I first put that brown putty on, I knew it could be painted over, and all would be good, but yeah, it never quite works out. you got to have the matching color. Same thing in our lives as well. For time, it helps us to forget the gaps, and the filler, though, it fails. And we're left again with those holes and those gaps, and sometimes even ugly. You know, our, our Lord and our Savior... He knew that we needed something to hold on to in this life. Something that would sustain us and sustain our faith. To, something to look to to find comfort for our weary souls and, and the strength in that faith that we have. Something to, to permanently fill the gap and the holes and, and let the beauty of his work, his creation, shine. And that's 
where Epiphany comes in. See, we've just begun the season of Epiphany. Epiphany is all about making something seen or making something known. Epiphany begins with the, the wise men seeing the star and coming to worship, fulfilling the prophecy where it says, the people who sit in darkness have now seen a great light. On that epiphany, the light truly shone. But you know, 30 years later, at the side of a Jordan, at the Jordan River, the light shone as well in the baptism of Jesus. When Jesus walked out of the water of the Jordan, between the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove and the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, it left no doubt that this ordinary <coughs> looking man from Nazareth wasn't just the son of Mary and the carpenter Joseph, but in fact is the long awaited Messiah, is the Son of God who was sent to earth with a very special mission, and that's to fill the gaps, to cover the holes, the things that are in our lives, to rescue and redeem God's people, and that includes you and me. And it was in that moment in the waters that Jesus took on himself the filth of our sins, to bring us out of the darkness that we were born into, to start to fill those gaps and those holes, with himself, with his forgiveness, with his suffering and his death on the cross, and then his resurrection, so that we would have the light and the comfort and joy of salvation. You know, this, this hole and gap filling, it took place at our own baptisms. We were given, as Peter talked about, a, a new identity, an identity that was and is Direction changing and eternal life changing. We are promised in Scripture that we have been rescued from all that, not by our words, not by our works, but by the Lord's work, by His word, and by His mercy. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became flesh in order to die for our sins. He rose again and He lives forever. And, as he, and he has died and he has risen for all the world. And he has done this specifically for you and for me. And you see, in the gift of baptism, that's where you and I are marked as a child of God. That's where we're given the gift that Christ earned. They're all attached and given to us. They fill in all those gaps and holes, all those things that would cause us dread and fear and uncertainty. The Apostle Paul, he, he, he tried to make this clear, just how important baptism is when he says to us, we were buried, therefore, with him in the death. You see, in Jesus' death, he suffered God's judgment for our sins. And in baptism... He joined us in that death. But instead of beatings and nails, you and I, we only felt a splash of water. But by that water and his holy word, when God looks at us, he no longer sees our sins, those gaps, those blemishes, those holes. He sees one whose sins are gone. Because with Jesus, we've already died to sin. And the one who has died has been freed from sin, we're promised. You know, the Holy, in holy baptism, Jesus, he also joins us to his resurrection. And while God originally created Adam and Eve to live eternally, the wages or consequences of sin is that death, is, it happens to all in this life. Yet Jesus has conquered death. So that while our bodies must still suffer the wages of sin in this world, we already have eternal life in Christ. We're alive. You and I, we have new life, eternal life, as a baptized and believing child of God. And the result is that Luther says that we don't declare, I was baptized, as if it's really not important, something from the past. 
But I am baptized. It, it's the difference between saying, I was alive, but I'm not anymore, to I am alive, and I'm alive still. But you know, we have to remember, and this is what Paul points out as well, that we live in a dying world. And it's important for us to remember that. As long as our sinful flesh still clings to us, those old holes creating an ugly gap ways in the world, they are tempting to seem perfectly natural and right and good. The world will still call us back to the living death that we once had. And the world's ways at times are going to seem so sensible and desirous. Just like when I was working on Jenny's house, I would fill all the gaps that look good, but as the wood settles and acclimates to the temperature, that new little gap might appear, and I have to touch it up. Well, same thing. We have to be careful of the gaps and holes that can try to reappear. That's why Paul said, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means, he says. To continue in unrepentant sin after baptism... That's like a, a pardoned prisoner saying, well, I've been released from prison, but I'm going to go back to myself and, and just know and pretend that I'm free. That's not for us. Instead, you and I, we're invited to cling to Jesus, who's joined us to his death for our sins. He has taken the forgiveness that he's won on the cross, and he has given it to each one of us through water and the word. And because of that, we hear the good news. We hear Jesus say, I have died for you, and I have joined you to that death in your baptism. At the cross, I made your sins my sins, your death my death. Here at the font, I made my death your death. I felt the scourge, the nails, the wrath of my Father. You just feel a splash of water, nothing more, because all that wrath is done and gone. Don't be deceived, we're told, by the ease of the gift. You are baptized at the cost of Jesus' body, sacrificed, and his blood shed, so that you don't have to pay that price for your sins. And now, now you and I, death has no claim on us. Hell has no claim on us. Instead, we hear from Jesus. Even though I died and was buried, I rose from the dead. My time in the grave was short, but I live again. I join you to that new life. The grave is a resting place for the body, but it's not the end. Death is mere moment. Sin causes death. Who's the, to those who believe, though, to those who repent, to those who know their Savior, they live forever. You know, this new life, these promises, they're yours and mine right now. And although our body still faces death before it's raised to perfection, even now, you and I can go about our days already knowing that eternal life in Christ is ours. Even now, we are set free from sin. Even now, we're set free to live the life of one redeemed. In the words of our text, it says... We are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. You see, all the holes and all the gaps of our life, they are filled. They're filled by and with Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds clean in Christ Jesus. Amen. And at this time, we'll join our voices in our offertory prayer as the offerings brought forth.
we continue to keep in our prayers Sheila and Scott and Peggy and Les and Lynn Honer as they all are recovering and wrestle through various things. Please rise for prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, in the Jordan River, you revealed Jesus to be your beloved Son. By your mighty work and wonder, open our hearts and minds today to embrace Jesus as your Son and our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, strengthen all those who have been washed clean in the waters of baptism. Mark as one of your own, lead them to find their true identity in you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, bless all pastors, church planners, missionaries, and servants in your church who proclaim your word and administer your sacraments. Embolden them to seek and save the lost and bring those who have strayed back into your family. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we lift up all who have been afflicted in our wrestling with illness of body and mind or spirit. Lord, we especially lift up Sheila and Scott and Peggy and Les and Lynn. We also lift up all in our hearts. Lord, you know their circumstances. You know the needed cure. You know the strength and patience and rest they seek. So, Lord, we lift them to you in your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we were so encouraged by all who you brought together over Christmas for worship. Send your spirit to continue your work in the hearts and minds of all, not in our midst now. We lift them in our prayers. Give us your voice to reach out to them, pointing them to Jesus and his love, inviting them to walk with us in this family of faith. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Holy Spirit, be with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. Thank you for the past. And we look forward to the future. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. in your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
uh, starting again, the things that were on a Christmas break, uh, uh, Sunday school and confirmation and Bible class, so please make note of those. If you didn't get a calendar for January uh, last Sunday, they are in the foyer in the little rack by the door, so you can pick up a calendar there. Portals of Prayer, if you didn't pick up the one starting with January, they're back behind Brian and Ruth Ann there, uh, so make sure you pick up those. We also have, um, while we're still rejoicing that we celebrated our 150th anniversary last year, we've got numerous amounts of notepads. And so, uh, please, there's notepads on the table there. I've got a whole case of them in the office. So start to take those, start passing them out, using them in that, because we'd like to... We'd like to use it before the next 150 years. Okay, so if you could do that, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, what else? Elizabeth? Uh, tomorrow night is Women's Fellowship at 6.30. We were to meet at Eleanor's, but she called me this morning. She's not feeling well. So we're going to be at our house. And uh, it's a Bible study, so please bring the, your Bible, and we will have that tomorrow night at 6.30. Tuesday is a prayer group here at 7.30. Thursday, Board of Christian Outreach will have our meeting at 4.30 in the Education Wing. And Saturday is Triple T from 9 to 11.30. So pick a day, or pick all the days, and come out and join us. Thanks. Okay, and, our, and of course, we want to invite everybody to stay around afterwards. I, I believe it's Donut Day, and so coffee and donuts and juice and fellowship. So stick around for that because we don't want to leave all those donuts behind. Okay? Uh, anything else? Seeing nothing, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you.